2K Sports pregame show. This is the NBA on 2K Sports. Ernie Johnson, happy to be here with my partners, Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. We'll watch the Phoenix Suns in this one as they go up against the Sacramento Kings here in their house, Golden One Center. Looking at the Kings, they lost game one in this matchup earlier this season. They'll see them four times in all, looking to even the series with a win tonight. Guys, during the 2016 offseason, the Suns' ownership wrote a letter to the fans acknowledging past mistakes, promising to deliver a winner moving forward. That's a pretty bold step, Shaq. Yeah, you know, some of the blame was being put on the players. You know, ownership also complained about how some of the players in the millennial generation can't deal with setbacks. Yeah. Well, this is just some chemistry issue. When you win basketball, we can't win basketball games, a lot of times it's just chemistry, meaning that certain guys don't fit together, don't mean that they can't fit in another place. And now you just need to figure out what that chemistry and what that mixture is on your team in Phoenix. You put it with the hot sun in Phoenix, Ernie. You put it in together, put it in a little jambalaya, put it together, and you got a great team. Greetings, everyone, from Sacramento. The Kings playing host to a Western Conference affair here in the capital of California. Welcome to the Tuesday night edition of the NBA on 2K Sports. Join courtside with Greg Anthony and Doris Burke. This is Kevin Harlan, and we've got David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. And just a single game trip away from Phoenix here for the Suns. They just haven't been able to buy a break lately. Five of their last six games have been losses. You're so right, Kevin. It has not been pretty of late for this team. But it appears as though help is on the way. They got a chance to get this streak stopped against the team that on paper they should beat. And it's the Kings to start out. So the opening lineup for the Suns. Chris and Chandler are up front. Booker and Jackson, the young perimeter pair, and it's Peyton in at the one spot. 
I think you have to like the future of Marquise Chris. His upside at the power forward position is high because he can do it all. Earl Watson said this guy could be a star, and the reason is because he's improved every year. And so it's the Suns getting on the board first. Outside Jackson. Here's Fox. No good on the shot. A bit long that time. And here are the Suns now. They couldn't put the pieces together losing that last matchup with San Antonio. Well, listen, I I've seen worse performances offensively, but no doubt that group was inconsistent. Well, certainly it wasn't their best night shooting the basketball. What you have to do is now put it aside and get focused for the next one. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. About halfway into the season, Doris, teams are already separating themselves from the pack. What are some of the elements you are looking for right now as you take a look at those top teams and trying to figure out a, a championship contender? So you know that line, it's about the economy, stupid. It's about the <laughs> players, right? you got to have right. players. you got to have stars. The contending teams always have at least two or three stars. So let's begin there. The other part is you've got to have the right role players around the stars. Think about the Draymond Greens. Think about the Kevin Loves. Guys in those positions that are in support of maybe the guys who have the ball in their hands. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, LeBron James. There's got to be an unselfishness, a professionalism, a commitment. Commitment, all the things that make championships possible on any number of levels. Jackson hits both of them. And you look at this Kings roster, and Greg, you can see the youth movement is in full effect. Yeah, and Buddy Hill headlines the group as he comes over in that Cousins trade, Scal Labissieri, and, and Willie Cauley Stein, also a big part of this team's future. And then getting Fox as a rookie to kind of run the ship, another great building block. And Labissier sends it back. You have to be cautious when Labissier is in the area. Those shot blocking skills are superb. And, and you can see the break slowed down for him to kind of pick his spot. And boy, was he open. And it's the Suns with the ball. Sacramento able to drain the three. Chris passed to Peyton. Six to shoot. There's a screen by Chris. Peyton drives in, uses the glass to finish the layup. Boy, defender taken out of the play with a rock-solid screen. No way he's going to get through that. Fox with it. 14 points from him the last game against Toronto. Jackson kicks to Cauley Stein. And fouled on the shot, so the bucket counts and a chance for one more here. No clue how he got that one to fall. And one of the side effects of the Cousins trade was it did open up more playing time for Willie Cauley Stein. I mean, immediately he was able to step in and, and fill those minutes and became a much larger part of their offense. And Phoenix making a change here. Warren's checked in. Greg, when Cauley Stein got those extra minutes after the Cousins deal, you could see a change in his play. Much more aggressive, much more confident. Yeah, you know, sometimes it just takes a clear path to minutes to change a player. Ca Cauley Stein had been getting better and better before the trade. Having the team believe he could step in was a huge boost in his confidence and his play. Jackson drops it in from 11 feet. Jackson's got seven points. Well, everything starts with a great pass, right? That's really pretty. To the inside. And Chris throws it down. Well, first of all, that's a great pass. But how about Chris with the vertical assault on the rim? Great way to see the alley-oop. That replay courtesy of Under Armour. Another unleash chaos moment. They kick out to heel. Chandler with the block. Peyton against Fox. 
he's off on that one. And Sacramento will go the other way with it. The Suns beat them last time. These two teams met in Phoenix. Yeah, and looking back at their last game against this club, they were badly out-rebounded. LeBissier, no good. Simply have to go up stronger than that. Could be a simple layup if he shows a little more determination. Here's Warren. They get it back. Here's Chris. That's in. He's got two made now, and he's shooting two for three. Well, you love the aggressiveness. Chris not drifting around on the outside. He's getting it done in the painted area. Here's LaBissier. Phoenix grabs the miss. Boy, too much traffic in the lane. Very difficult finish with the defense draped all over him. Booker dishes to Peyton. And it's Chris in the corner. Chance there to take the lead. Missing. Now we'll go to David Aldridge, who had a chance to talk with head coach Earl Watson. Well, Kevin, he thinks their length should be an edge in this one. He told me our shot blocking can really help us as long as we play smart and avoid fouls. We want them to shoot over our length. That's one thing we do bring to the table. We'll see if that works out. Kevin, back to you. Thanks, David. And guys, do you agree that they have to put the emphasis on their defense here early on? I do. Uh, I think it's a great idea to play to your strengths, and, and defense is a strong suit for this group. Well, it's something that they have considered their signature. The defensive end of the floor is something they bring every single game. Two shots. That one misses. I think T.J. Warren in this day and age of stretch shooting forwards is a bit of an outlier, right? His build is not as long as some, and a lot of his work is done on the inside of the arc. It's fascinating that he can be effective. And he's good on the second. And for Warren, he doesn't play like most NBA small fours, Doris, but that's one of the reasons he's found success. Well, I think this is a guy who can make an impact beyond his scoring. He is really focused on being a better defender and being a better rebounder. This guy always feels comfortable with his offense. He's just striving to be more complete. And, and already they've staked out a noticeable advantage in terms of aggression and controlling the backdoor. Here's LeBissier. Lays it up and in off the pretty assist. Yeah, sprinting end to end, but under control. That, that's the key. No, exactly right, Greg. You can't go too fast. He pulled that off in brilliant fashion. Here's Chris. Scal of this year picking up that last basket. I'll tell you, this guy, one of the league's more promising stretch bigs. Chris with a smooth catch and release. Here's Fox. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. And right away, they match it with a three-pointer of their own. And that was a, a real quick comeback there. Both sides showing some range. But both teams are pulling the trigger right now, showing great confidence from behind that arc. Now here's Booker. Overhealed, but he recovers it. There's a screen by Chris. And Booker kicks to Chris. And play stops as it looks like they call an over the back here. Yeah, pretty obvious over the back call there, but being out of position, that was really the only option. Right, or he can just concede the rebound and probably better off doing that than picking up a silly foul. Healed the pass to Cauley Stock. Here's Jackson. How on the play, basket counts, so it'll be a three-point play chance. Yeah, heard the whistle and then kept his focus and able to still knock it down. The Kings shooting their fourth attempt at the free throw line right here. So for the Suns, Troy Daniels comes in for Booker and Eula subbed in for Peyton.
There's Euless. Eight points his last outing. Chandler is screen. Euless dishes to Chandler. Here's Daniels. Misses the three. And they come out with a take no prisoners approach on the glass here tonight, guys. It just seems like the more he touches it, the more the lead grows. Suns trail by 10. And first time out of the game called for Phoenix. Once in a while, we talk about the makeup of a good teammate. But Doris, what are some ominous signs that a player might be in it for more himself as opposed to team? Well, I think any time you see someone who's not committed to practicing at the important time, somebody whose availability might be in question, who, who might let a slight, I don't want to say injury, but a nick or a bump or a bruise, uh, you know, limit their availability, that's, that's obviously a difficult thing. Sure. And, you know, the other part is, Kevin, the players that I think have the most success are those that can be as joyous about their teammates' success as they are about their own. That's something that strikes me about the Golden State Warriors. It's a group invested in the group's success. And you see that both monetarily in terms of what some players are willing to give up. And you also see that basketball, someone like a Clay Thompson who has to be effective in fewer shots with the addition of Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. Good breakdown. And the first one at the line is good. And the Suns making a change here. Williams has checked in. That one is no good. Well, you look back at the history of the Phoenix Suns, and they have had some incredible players suit up for them. Well, you think Sir Charles, one of the famous names that have played for the franchise, but Steve Nash, Amari Stoudemire, Sean Marion, Dan Marley, Kevin Johnson. We were talking about some great players. Here's Temple. Phoenix able to drain the three. Randall. First shot, first basket. He's out of the blocks fast. <laughs> Defensively, they've got to pick up the intensity. Hard to win surrendering this high a field goal percentage. Feeds to Williams. Let's it go from 14. That's good on the jump shot. Williams has got his first bucket in this one. Here's Temple. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. King's moving the ball around. And there it is for him. Cauley Stein's got his second bucket of the night. And really focused on establishing dominance down low. And guys, it's working. Oh, no doubt. I think they've controlled the paint. They've used their size and strength to get off any shot they want. Now here's Williams. Got a piece of it. One kick kicks to Ewis. Here's Daniels. How good on the three. Uh, a team's rebounding is a great measure of its energy, and theirs has been terrific here in the first quarter. Jackson misses. Well, the defense harassing him every step of the way makes that a really tough look. On the wing, Williams, a baseline J, and that comes off the assist by Euless. Euless has got three assists in the game. Sacramento leading by eight. Here's Temple. Quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. He kicks to Cauley Stein. And Cauley Stein throws it down. And when you build a big lead like this, especially early, you have to guard against the letdown. No, exactly right. You can't afford to get complacent, right? They have to stay hungry and humble if they want to keep this lead. Here's Euless. Sacramento making their last shot. There's a screen by Chris. Down low. A strong finish under heavy pressure all over. Chris has got nine. This is what you want from Marquise Chris, right? Battling inside, challenge the defense. Nice work. Temple the pass to Jackson. Jackson missing again. Suns trail by eight. Here's Daniels. From outside, off the mark. He's fighting it in this quarter. Hasn't been able to get into any sort of groove. 
Randolph a screen. They set the pick. Outside Jackson. Carter with the three. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. And they can't allow him too many open looks like that. that that's just inviting trouble. There's a screen by Chris. And that one's good. Daniels. Daniels has got his second bucket of the game to go. And, and that's why it's so important to really be a good screening team. You get a lot of open looks from it. Temple dishes to Cauley Stein. And Cauley Stein throws it down. <laughs> and jumping out like this, man, you automatically start thinking blowout. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, they've been aggressive and assertive right from the opening tip. They've seized command of this game. Let's see what happens. And it's the Suns with the ball. Sacramento making their last shot. Here's Temple. His last outing, he had eight points. Pass to Randall over Daniels. And he gets the friendly spin, and that one drops. And the Kings lead by 13. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they shot the basketball. Off target from three-point range. And, and not a night he's going to want to remember, just not really able to score the basketball. Cauley Stein against Len. Jackson kicks to Cauley Stein. Six on the shot clock. Here's Temple. No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. And Zach Randolph gets the whistle that time. That is his first foul of the game. Some changes for Sacramento. Kufis comes in for Willie Cauley-Stein. And then Shumpert in there for Jackson. Suns trail by 13. Euless passes to Chris. Back to Euless. There's the pick. Down low. Now eight seconds separating the two clocks. Offensive rebound. Temple gets the bucket. Temple's got his first points of the game. And from the opening tip, they have been in complete control of this one. Yeah, you know, it looks like they've wanted it more. Outstanding hustle and determination throughout. Now, here's Euless. Looking in his numbers, he averages a bit over nine points a game. One kick kicks to Daniels. Six to shoot. Pass to Chris. Over Carter. And the shot falls short this time. And as we conclude the first quarter, a one-sided game so far. Kings lead by 15. And back with the start of the second quarter in just a moment. And let's hear from Tyson Chandler. He talked about what he brings to this team. I do a lot that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. That's what I pride myself on. You know, some nights you're not going to get the ball, but uh, you still can be effective on the floor, uh, whether that's rebounding, playing defense, hustling, trying to create extra shots for your team, whatever it is necessary that I feel like help my team get a win. Chandler has long been the kind of player all coaches want on their team. He's the definition, Greg, of an unselfish player who doesn't care about his ego or his stats. And, and he knows that and, and prides himself on it. That, that also makes him the kind of player his teammates appreciate so much because they know nobody wins any rings without a guy like Tyson Chandler on the team. Well, not exactly a close game so far, but as the second quarter starts here, plenty of time for a comeback. And quite a position here for the Kings to be in. What do you guys think? I mean, an interesting first quarter. The, the pressure D seems to be causing a lot of turnover. Feels like they're getting a lot of deflections, hands on basketballs, resulting into steals. This has been pretty to watch. We've got Kufus. Garrett Temple is out there with the mind Shumper. And there's Carter. And it's Randolph in at the power forward. That's the five to begin the second quarter for the Kings. Now here's Williams. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. Doors with every team looking to spread the floor, get that space. Most big men are being asked to increase their range. Is the practice time going into that taking away from 
working, for instance, on other fundamentals that a big guy should be working on. Here's how you know this is for real. When you hear Dwight Howard talking <laughs> about the fact that this guy is going to spend an entire summer trying to develop the range because he wants to extend his playing career. Sure. Dwight Howard at Two one shots. time was the single most dominant back to the basket low post center. They surrounded him with shooters. They put him in pick and roll, and he was an absolute monster. Uh, you know what? I don't know if it'll take away from the other fundamentals for the center. I do know that the role of center has drastically changed in the NBA. When the Kings struggled last season, Greg, they did so because they just couldn't get stops in the defensive end. And defense something that this team will struggle with at times. A lot of it is they don't protect the rim or close out, particularly on that three-point shot. And so much of defense just boils down to challenging shooters whenever you can. It's about giving more effort on that side of the ball. And we played through the first uh, minute here in the second. Outside jumper. The feed now to Randolph. Here's the screen. Goes back up. And that's two points on the layup. Randolph's got six points. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. Shepard against Booker. Payton kicks to Williams. Whistle on the play. Bucket's good. He'll go to the line. And really, it's been a major aspect of their offense in the early stages here. Their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range. Here's what Sacramento's going with right now. Scal LeBissiers checked in for Randolph. Buddy Heald comes in for Vince Carter. And it's Fox in for Garrett Temple. One shot. And that one falls for Williams. A minute and a half gone here in the second quarter. Now, here's Fox. He provides a good amount of offense for the team, averaging around 11 and a half points a game. Here's Heald. They set the screen over Jackson. And too long on the shot. Boy, that's a tough miss. Does well to get himself open and then botches it up. Wasted no time on that shot, but it's off the mark. This is to Shumpert. Unloads from 13. His shot is good, making him a perfect two for two from the floor. Yeah, Shumpert continues to develop that mid-range game, and he's looking so much more confident there every day. Williams dishes to Warren. Tries again. Williams. Coopers with the block. The shot's good. And here in the second quarter of action with a hair under two and a half minutes played so far. Fox kicks to Shumper. There's the screen. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. Greg, you ask a lot of GMs. De'Aaron Fox, probably the fastest player in this year's rookie class. And he, he plays at one speed. That's lightning. I mean, he's got speed to burn. And maybe not quite as fast as, say, John Wall, but he isn't far behind. He uses that quickness well also in terms of just busting seams on the offense. And at the other end, he can be an outstanding defender as he was at Kentucky. And he knocks down the first one. And I really love Fox's game. He's got a ton of room to grow, but boy, does he play with intensity. Tyson Chandler, he's checked in for Phoenix. So he makes one of two as the second one misses. Well, you look at the strength of this Phoenix Suns team, and it is clear that it lies with their perimeter players. Devin Booker appears to be a player that you can build around. Last season, most of their offense generated from their guards. 
Now here's Jackson. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. And the Kings pushing it up now. Here's the lob to the hoop. And, and I like the fact that he really was unfazed by that scoreless first quarter. And now you can see him getting into a rhythm. Suns trail by 18. Phoenix calls timeout. Yeah, the amount of points they've given up here in the paint, that, that's what they've got to talk about. Well, I think they've got to ramp up the pressure. There's no excuse for letting them score at will in the paint. Make them feel you. Let's take a look at the playmaking here. This chart with the assist totals split between the front court and the back court tonight for the Suns. This back court is really shouldering the load in terms of the ball movement and, and great assists. When you look at the overall contributions compared to the bigs, nice work on distributing the ball. Peyton outside. The dish to Warren. From deep. But they get it back. Here's Jackson, and it's good for two. Yeah, he's like a surgeon down low operating in the paint. He is incredibly effective there. Healed the pass to Shumper. He kicks it to LeBissier. Got a piece of it. In the corner, it's healed. Bangs home the trifecta. Healed's got five points so far gentlemen this guy goes from good three-point shooter to great when you give him that kind of space and there's the pass to Jackson shoots a fader the shot comes out and Sacramento will go the other way with it outplayed in the previous game on their schedule losing to the Raptors yeah we saw no matter what the they going. tried offensively the opponent just had the answer well, that was an absolute beatdown. And you hope that they learn and move on from it. And Amon Shumpert, the 17th overall pick by the New York Knicks back in 2011. Well, Kev, this guy has played steady minutes throughout his career because he's an athletic, aggressive defender. He's a guy who's had some tough luck with injuries, but he can help you in that wing rotation. Free throw good, Amon Shumpert. Of course, they say that one of the toughest things about calling a game is balancing pure basketball knowledge with entertainment. What's your approach with that, that topic? Do you know that was the last piece of broadcasting that I think fell into place for me? For a long time, I felt like I was proving myself, Kevin, so I didn't relax and enjoy it. But my son one time said to me, when we were watching a game, he said, Mom, you have to understand when the announcers are having fun, we're having fun. Chemistry is such a big part of it, isn't it? Crucial. 13 feet away. Takes a big height bounce and goes in. Fox has got his second basket of the game. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. Jackson kicks to Peyton. With the floater, he lays it in. I'll tell you, that's a graceful finish. Not just any old layup. The teardrop. Kings leading now by 21. And here is Fox. He's got six. He dishes it to Kufus. Passes to Heald. Fires the three. And it's Phoenix with the rebound. He's tried to get it going, but the shots simply have not been there. Nothing seems to be falling. Booker with no one around. No good from outside. Well, that's the shot they want. He always has the green light when he's that open. Boy, one miss isn't going to change that. Healed with it. He's guarded by Booker. Back to healed. Six to shoot. Outside jumper. Tyson Chandler pulls it in. Chandler's got his third rebound tonight. It's tipped, and so it looks like the Suns will retain possession here.
Peyton against Fox. Peyton attacking. Misses in close. Yeah, affecting the shot in a big way there. Excellent defense. Well, you talk about getting into the space of the shooter. This is how you defend the paint. And let's check out some stats for Jackson. How last month turned out for him. He's averaging 10 points a game, six rebounds, and two assists. And, and those numbers, solid, not spectacular. And, and sometimes what you see is what you get. There's no doubt. This is a guy who understands his role, knows he's got to give you quality minutes, and that's what they expect from him. That one is off. And well, last season for the Kings, they were in the hunt for a good stretch there early on, but kind of fell out of playoff contention and finally decided to pull the trigger and trade DeMarcus Cousins. It marked a major direction change that this team, I think, wanted to make. And the second free throw, good. And the Cousins deal, Greg, has really been examined. But what is clear is that the Kings wanted to get younger and start rebuilding. And you can argue if the trade was the right move or not, but management felt it was. The team's thinking was they wanted to change the atmosphere of the locker room, fully committed to bringing in youth and doing things from the ground up. Phoenix calls timeout. You know, my guess right now is coach wants to talk over this turnover issue, and it seems like they've been trying to force things a bit and need to find a steady rhythm offensively. And now it's time for the rookie watch with this season's assist leaders. This is the newest crop of playmakers in the NBA. De'Aaron Fox third. A, a number of gifted passers entering the NBA this season, and he's right up there among the very best. I like what I've seen from him as a distributor. Now here's Chandler still getting warmed up offensively no buckets yet in the game for him and he rushed that one no doubt about it the D out of position you could see the frustration. Oh, Goodness. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah he's not the biggest guy Shumpert but he can rise up and put on a show as well as anyone else in this league. Phoenix has gone 0 3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. There's the screen and Jackson throws it down. Hey, how about the ferocity on that one? He, he is a force to be reckoned with, an absolute vicious dunker. Hey, Greg, when you watch Josh Jackson play, it's easy to see that he can eventually be one of the best defenders in the league if he works at it. The blocks and, and steals, I think, will always be there for Jackson What's with that, that length. As he progresses as a player, though, he should improve in the little things. It reminds you a bit of a young Andre Iguodala at times with how explosive he can be athletically. And they're getting to the line a lot in this quarter, guys, and it hasn't been by accident. Sacramento leading by 21. Out of bounds. It'll go to the Suns. Now we get a chance to check out the standings out west. Already we're in December. You look at Phoenix. They're right now in the eighth spot in the conference here in the early part of the season. And, of course, there's the Kings, three games behind. And I think for Sacramento, their season has been exactly the kind of misadventure their fans were afraid it might be. And with the major changes we know are coming, now you have players fighting for their jobs, trying to prove they deserve to be here beyond the end of this season. The Kings making a switch here. Cauley Steins checked in. Jackson setting the pick here for Booker. Stolen by Jackson. And Fox with a clear path to the basket. Count that bucket. Fox has got nine points. I tell you, get the feeling he's only going to get better as this game wears on. That first quarter was good. His second quarter has been great. Now here's Jackson. He's got five. Chandler. Sacramento grabs the miss. Cauley Stein's got three rebounds now in this one. Healed. That one's not going to go. Good D by Booker. And Aaron Fox gets the whistle that time. That is his first foul of the game. Adores on the subject of league expansion. Commissioner Silver has said that 30 teams feels about right at this point. How long do you think it's going to be before we add 
another franchise or two to the NBA. All right, let me just say that I completely concur with Commissioner Silver. The last thing we want to see when the NBA is at its peak in popularity is expansion that might dilute some of the competitiveness that we want to see happen. The bigger question right now is these super team issues. Are we at a point where there is such disparity between the best teams in the league and the worst? Let's address that first, and then we can look at expansion down the road. So you do not like the super team aspect that we're beginning to uh, see formulate it from time to time? I don't necessarily want to say that. I think the jury is still out, Kevin. We have to see how the next two or three years plays out as it relates to both Cleveland and Golden State. I think there was a period in the 80s where it felt like it was the Lakers and the Celtics every year. Let's not overreact, but certainly let's not add teams before we make sure we are where we need to be from competitiveness standpoint. Jackson with it, now guarded by Fox. Chris passed to Peyton. But they recover it. Wow, just getting all the luck right now, it seems. Good bounce. Cauley Stein against Warren over Cauley Stein. And the shot by Warren, no good. And so far this quarter, he's been a little off on his game. Yeah, scoring isn't coming naturally to him right now. Looking a little bit uncomfortable out there. Jackson has the open look. Gets a very good look and converts. Jackson's got his third basket of the night. And Jackson there going right from dribbling to that shooting motion. Showing great confidence by stopping on a dime for that pull-up. Now here's LeBissier. 14 points from him the last game against Toronto. I thought his physicality was crucial too. You know, he kept the defense on their toes and repeatedly got to the free throw line. That's the kind of D you need when he's got the ball near the hoop. They were all over. Warren kicks to Peyton. The shot, the good looking shot from the wing. Peyton's got four this quarter. Timeout is called. First of the game for Sacramento. And Doris for Marquise Chris in his rookie season. It took some time for him to adjust to the NBA. Right, and you could see it in the way that Chris carried himself on the floor. He was more aggressive with the ball and attacking the rim. And that's when you start to see him asking for the ball on offense, and the confidence was apparent. Here's what Sacramento's going with right now. Zach Randolph's checked in for Scal Labissier. Carter comes in for Buddy Heal. And Garrett Temple subbed in for Fox. And once again, off the mark by Sacramento. Suns trail by 20. The wide open look here for Ulis. Cauley Stein grabs the board. Cauley Stein's got his fifth rebound in this one. Good work there as it goes. And some guys just have a nose for scoring. And this one couldn't have been any easier. Well, really good awareness by the score. You're seeing an opening in the defense and exploiting it beautifully. Now, here's Ulis looking for his first basket still in this one. And guys, they continue to put a lot of pressure on the interior defenders with their work down low. Here's Temple. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. Outside for Randolph, but three. Phoenix grabs the miss. One on nine left to play here in the second quarter. Here's Daniels from out on the wing. He knocks it down. Daniels has got seven points in the game. Kings leading now by 18. Coley Stein a screen. Outside Jackson. Carter on the wing. Randolph kicks to Carter. And then Carter with the jam. And that's what Carter does best. Knifing his way inside so he can finish with the easy slam. Suns trail by 20. Now Euless. He feeds it to Williams. Rebounded by Jackson. Yeah, coming off that screen wide open. Just can't convert. I think, Greg, that's exactly what you want. The screen was solid. The execution just fell a little bit short on the shot. Now here's Randolph. He's got six. Jackson dishes to Randolph. Temple. Count it. 
six points for him. Yeah, that's the third bucket in a row from the paint. This defense needs to clog those lanes in the middle. Picked by Williams. Euless kicks to Williams. Pass to Chris. Over Carter. No good with the elbow jumper. A dominating first half of basketball. And so far, hasn't been close. It's Sacramento just dominating this one. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thank you, Kevin. Here with Coach Dave Yeager. Coach, what is going to be the focus offensively going into the second half? Well, we try to go inside. You know, that's our strength anyways. And for us, you know, our bread is buttered inside, so we try to play high-low. And then if the threes come out of that, great, but we want to try to get everything to the rim. Coach, it all starts with that entry pass to the big, and then everybody plays off of him. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. And we'll be right back after halftime to start the third quarter. See you in just a bit. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome back, everybody. Witness so far to an upset here tonight. I'm Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal. You with us? Huh? Yeah, he's kind of with you. It's Sacramento with the advantage at the half. They are completely in control of the game, leading by a massive amount. Kenny, what's your take? Well, they knocked the win out of the defense in transition, converting fast break baskets in volume. It's a runaway lead right now. In fact, this looks like a track meet. Shaq, what do you think about Phoenix? Way too soft in the paint defensively. They were all late on their rotations. Obviously, that's a recipe for getting cooked. And you know I like eating that barbecue chicken. They got to do better, Ernie. So that'll do it for now as we send you courtside with Kevin Harlan and the rest of the 2K crew for the start of the second half. A nighttime glimpse of the Tower Bridge, one of the landmarks here in Sacramento. Welcome back, everyone, to the capital of California. Well, we're getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. The sun shooting struggles apparent, 37% from the field. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go for the second half of basketball. Setting the floor for the Suns, Jackson and Chris, the athletic pair in the forward slots. Evan Booker out there with Alfred Payton, and it's Chandler in at the center position. Misses the layup. He had him with that pump fake. And, and, and typically he has the touch to finish when he's in tight, but not sure on that possession. Out of bounds, it'll go to the Suns. And a moment here to look at where the shots have been coming from for the Kings. And this is a grown man shot chart right here. Not too much going on outside, but look at how things are for them in the paint. They are attacking the rim and not settling for the jump shot. And right now, it's paying off in bunches. If I'm them, then I'd continue to do the same thing going forward until an adjustment is made. Peyton with the ball. To the paint. It's tipped. And so it looks like the Suns will retain possession here. And taking a look here at some numbers for Booker. His last 10 games, averaging about 22 points per, three assists, and three rebounds. He has been terrific throughout, putting up some huge numbers offensively. Well, and this is exactly who he is, a flat-out scoring machine. You just plug him in and let him go to work. And Devin Booker out of the University of Kentucky was taken 13th overall in the 2015 draft course. And after the first few years he's had, there have been a lot of teams kicking themselves for not taking Booker earlier. Right. You wonder, did he slip in the draft because he never started in college? But remember, he did win sixth man of the year, and you've got to base your evaluations on what your eye test is. First one falls for him. 
And the Phoenix Suns, one of the younger teams in the NBA. And I think, Kevin, you have to give credit to the Suns organization for making some great picks in the draft. Devin Booker and Marquise Chris both look like steals given where they were taken. The front office has added some franchise cornerstones even before drafting Josh Jackson this summer. He's perfect from the line this time. And more and more, it's looking like Devin Booker, the 13th pick in the 2015 draft, is going to be one of the biggest steals of that draft class. And he's one that all GMs are looking at, and they wish they could have a redo. I mean, Booker was very young when he entered the draft, and some teams may be shied away from that. But clearly, he's shown that he could be one of the best players in that class. Sacramento leading by 20. Fox passes to LeBissier. Heald sets the pick for LeBissier. Kicks to Fox. LeBissier, the screen. And count it. He'll head to the line with a chance to make it three. Exceptional play across the board. I love their tenacity. Just piling it on at this point. You know, and the beauty is it hasn't just been offense, right? It's been the defensive end as well. They're firing on all cylinders right now. The Kings have been shooting right around 75% at the line, 9 of 12 so far. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot. We throw good Fox Doris one strength that the Suns have is the length of their front court right Josh Jackson the rookie leads the way in that regard but remember Marquise Chris and Dragon Bender also with great length in the front court and as these guys develop they can pose a lot of matchup problems for opponents now Jackson after Devin Booker missing on that last three point pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now Right around a minute and a half, played here in the third quarter. Takes a three. Phoenix, no good that time either. Well, an 0 for 3 start to the second half. They're going to have to start tightening things up on the offensive end. They kick out to heel. And Carly Stein has it in the corner. The wide open look here for Fox. Off target from three point range. Phoenix has gone 0 of 2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Offensive rebound. I'll tell you, I hate to say it, but he's been dragging them down all night. The effort's there, but he continues to be ice cold. Puts it up from seven. Feeds it to LeBissier. Over Chandler. Lands soft on the front of the rim and drops. I'm sorry, that's poor defense down low again. It's been a mismatch thus far in the paint. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Now, here's Chandler. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Shot clock at six. No good from Peyton. Ouch. Five shots without a make. That's a really ragged start coming out of halftime. Pass to Jackson. It's stolen by LeBissier. Out of bounds, it'll go to the Suns. And with this quick break, we can show you the list of the most explosive shooting guards in the NBA so far. Devin Booker, third. And this is the cream of the crop at the two-guard spot. I mean, strictly in terms of their scoring ability and the ease with which they can overwhelm would-be defenders. You know, and that's why it often requires more than one man to defend against any of them. These players draw more double teams than any group in the league, and they still are able to put up points at a devastating rate. Phoenix calls timeout. And his guys are getting frustrated. Coach just really kind of needs to calm them down. I think, Greg, they've got to continue to believe that the next shot is going to go in. He can hopefully communicate that effectively to them. And some changes here for the Kings. Kufus checked in for Carly Stein. And Shumpert in there for Jackson. Got a piece of it. Booker. And the layup's good off the glass. Booker's got six. Uh, all the tools. When you're talking about Booker, he's got everything he needs to be one of the league's great scorers. Healed with it. Now Peyton defending. 
Now here's Heald. He's tightly guarded. Chandler with the block. One of the great rim protectors, really, over the last decade or so. Chandler just oh, twice on the pipes on that one. Now here's Peyton. He has six. It's rebounded by LeBissier. LeBissier's got his seventh rebound here tonight. And they've only got a slight edge on the boards, but it just feels a lot bigger. Well, he's one of those guys who's kept their offense clicking. They're in front, thanks in no small part to what this guy's done. Over to the wing. There's the lob to Jackson and the dunk by Jackson. And how about Jackson just taking off on these alley-oops? He, he has phenomenal timing for when to jump up and finish the lob pass. It was beautiful the first time, but Under Armour showing us the replay of that tremendous alley-oop again. Another Unleash Chaos moment. Here's Kufus after Josh Jackson's bucket. Shumpert in the corner. The feed now to heel. Lock at six. Trying to break that ice cold streak. And the layup is good. Ten points for him. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Fox against Peyton. On the wing, Jackson. Shumpert with some nice deep. Sacramento's gone 6 of 14 with the three ball tonight. Just a little over 40%. In the corner, it's Kufus. Now, here's Fox. He's got 15. Here's LeBissier. Phoenix grabs the miss. Chandler's got rebound number nine now. What an effort here tonight. No good from Booker. Oh, great effort there. That's how you defend the paint. Well, that's just stellar interior defense. You can't ask for anything more than that. Now, here's Fox. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Oh, the, the officials are all over that one. And this is his fourth trip to the free throw line tonight. And, of course, we'd all like to see his percentage at the line improve. But he just does not have the touch right now. He's in the 60s. Two shots. Free throw good. Fox. T.J. Warren, he's checked in for the Suns. hits them both. Phoenix has gone 0 2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Booker dishes to Chandler. They set the pick to the left side wing. Peyton left side. Six on the shot clock. Softly drops in the floater. Peyton's got eight points. Boy, what touch. You know, a lot of guys don't have the kind of feel necessary to make the floater. Fox kicks to LeBissier. Dishes it to Fox. Back to LeBissier. Launches it. Sacramento gets it back. And it's good. Two points. Kufus has got his first points of the night. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. They set the screen. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley-oop. Here's Fox. The second chance effort, and it's laid in by LeBissier. LeBissier's got four points now in the quarter. And LeBissier is a tireless worker on the boards, hitting them relentlessly and coming away with additional opportunities for his team. Now here's Peyton. He's got eight. Jackson a screen on Shumpert. Shot clock at six. Shoots from the line. No good that time. He's trying to make something happen, but obviously been a tough quarter. Healed the pass to LeBissier. 
the dish to Fox. And it's off from three-point range. And it's blocked, but they recover it. Payton, that's good. Ten points for him. Sacramento's gone one of four and three-point shots here in the third. Fox kicks to heel. The pass to LeBissier. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Chandler. And looking at the numbers for De'Aaron Fox, how's the last month of basketball been for him? Averaging 12 points, six assists, and two rebounds. And right now for him, it's about gaining experience and continuing to develop his game. This is a man's game, and you've got to earn your minutes in this league. This guy, his time will come eventually. Peyton against Fox. Peyton kicks to Jackson. Over Shumpert. And he overshot that one, missing. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. Oh, and here we go. Jackson, nobody back. And the dunk by Jackson. It was one of the things everybody talked about. Jackson has a terrific IQ and turned himself into an opportunistic defender, not afraid to take a chance and come up with a steal. Now here's LeBissier. He's got eight. Here's Kufus. Phoenix grabs the miss. Warren's got three rebounds now in this one. No one near Peyton as he lets it go. And it's off from three-point range. Three on three. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Phoenix will take possession. And a chance here to take a look at the shooting chart for Booker. And these sorts of nights can happen. I mean, an extremely rough outing from him in terms of his efficiency. And at this point, the only thing you can hope for is to try to get into some sort of rhythm. Get a couple in a row, try to get to the free throw line and build some confidence. Now, Booker after the miss three from Alfred Payton. From deep three-point range, that doesn't go either for Peyton. Yeah, yeah, and even with his range, that one might be asking a little too much. Yeah, that zip code might extend beyond his range. My goodness, let's take a better shot next time. Count that one. That's a big payoff for crashing the offensive boards. Go to work. Phoenix has gotten off to a very slow start from three-point range in the second half. They're 0 for 4. Chandler is screen. And here is Peyton. He's got 10 from the low block. Kicks it out to Booker. Back to Chandler. Fox against Peyton. Over Fox. Peyton with another miss. Well, I love the determination, guys. It's simply not there for him right now. Fox dishes to LeBissier. Basket number five goes in. He's now 5 of 12 from the floor. He's made obvious improvements since the half, really getting into an offensive groove. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Here's Warren. Doesn't get it to drop for him. Sacramento's gone one of four and three-point shots here in the third. Shumper gets a wide-open look. They get it back. Labissiere, shot by Heald. Nobody around. Hits the three-point bomb. Heald's got five points now this quarter. His first triple of the second half. That makes three for the game. Peyton against Fox. Peyton passes to Chandler. Peyton outside. Jackson setting the pick here for Warren. Up again. And I bet you'll never see too many guys who can put forth an effort on the boards like this one. Yeah, you know, his production has been unbelievable. Really a testament to how much he cares about his craft. And, and that assist got him a little nod from his teammate after that one. They're not having much success at all right now. Kevin, I would shuffle the lineup if, if I were their coach a little bit just to try to find something that works. Now here's Booker. Six points for him. Overhealed. 
Here's Chandler, and there's the bucket. Staying with it on the offensive glass, getting it done. Chandler's got his first basket of the night. Fox kicks to Heald. Here's Kufus. It's hauled in by the Suns. 16 seconds left in the third quarter. For three, Booker. It's good. The assist this time from Jackson. And it's nine points for Devin Booker. Here's Fox. Over Peyton. Misses there. The three quarters of play all in the books. And this one all but over already. Kings ahead. Delivering the blowout. And coming up as soon as we return from break, the fourth quarter gets underway. And now let's hear what head coach Dave Yeager was reviewing with his team. Stay aggressive, keep them moving. Don't let them stand and get set up and steam up. And that's Dave Yeager laying out the key points for his team over this next stretch. Yeah, I mean, he really wants the ball and his guys to remain in constant motion. Keep the defense on defense. And we welcome you back as we get going here in the fourth quarter. The final quarter of play can change everything. Carter out there with Zach Randolph. Then it's Garrett Temple. And it's Caboclo in at the two. That's the five out there for the Kings. And no good that time. The Suns go the other way with it. Now Daniels. They set the pick. Up top, Dudley. Shot off a pick. That one doesn't go. They're not going to get away with many mistakes like that on the defensive end. you got to get out on him right there. Caboclo, the pass to Temple. Doris, looking at the way the playoffs are set up, the top eight teams from each conference get in. So at what point might the league eliminate divisions altogether? I don't think that's far in the future, to be perfectly honest with you. What I'm as curious about, Kevin, is would they ever see the teams, regardless of Eastern or Western Conference, because there seems to be some disparity right. in level of competition. Is that something you'd like to see, Kevin, where the teams are simply seated one through 16 based on record? I don't think I'd mind it, Doris, but I do like the fact that, kind of like in the other sports, where you don't have the familiarity, but you always think about what would it be like to see a five-game series, Cleveland-Golden State, whereas in the regular season, just there and, and at home. And, and there's something, I think, kind of mysterious, and, and, and you can project so many different things. It's great fodder before a series begins. No question. I, it'll be very interesting to see which direction the league goes in. There's Euless. The Kings getting the bucket. That's tipped. Game moves along. Two minutes gone here in the fourth. And Temple kicks to Caboclo. Carter outside. Pass to Giles. That's in there. Carter with the assist. Boy, what great body control you saw there. Laying it up and in despite having the defense draped all over him. Glenn, a screen. Euless kicks to Daniels. With some arc, and he lays it up and in. Oh, perfect timing there to knock down the teardrop. For Sacramento, they've gone two for five on field goal attempts in the fourth quarter. Here's Temple. Passes it to Caboclo. Charity stripe shot. Not enough on that one as it misses. The Suns have gone one of three from the field to start the fourth quarter. Daniels dishes to Euless. Here's Bender, banked in off the glass. Well, that's just Bender using his size to his advantage down low. The D can do nothing with him. A look at the clock, a little under three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth. Caboclo kicks to Carter. Pass to Caboclo. Shoot 
Edwards over Eulis. Shot by Caboclo. No good. Al Phoenix shooting just 34% from the floor. Ridley with it, and it's Carter picking him up. Rejected by Randolph. And now Sacramento on the break. Carter against Dudley. Back to Carter. Some nice ball movement here by the Kings. Temple the pass to Caboclo. Over Daniels. Rejected by Len. Well, for a big guy so light on his feet, Len rising into the air with ease. Mason, he checked in for Garrett Temple. Williams, he's checked in for the Suns. Brandon Knight comes in for Ulis. Knight against Mason. Out tonight. Back to Williams. Unloads from 13. Another shot. Here's Len, and he banks in the layup. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Mason against Knight. Mason with it. Picked by Randall. The shot by Carter. Nobody around. Drains it from beyond the arc. And, and piling on to that big lead. We, we know he has the range late on the defensive reaction. You always got to D up on the perimeter. When you don't, this is what happens. Yeah, easy call. An all-star week, a fan favorite, certainly. But, Doris, I've heard you say on more than one occasion you'd love to see a three-on-three -three competition. Kevin, I think if you're trying to learn the game of basketball, putting yourself in a situation to play three-on-three -three is one of the greatest ways you can develop your game. One, it teaches you how to pass and cut, right? You cannot be effective in a three-on-three -three game unless you understand how to screen for somebody, how to set yourself up to come off of a screen. If the shorter dynamic of the three-on-three -three in a half-court environment is one of the best ways to learn how to play the game of basketball. I love that analysis. That's terrific. That one is off. And he sinks the second. Here is Mason. He kicks to Randolph. Over Williams. And again, it's Sacramento converting. He might not elevate like some of the other guys on the court, but as we've learned, Randolph knows how to get the ball in the basket. Here is Daniels. He dishes it tonight. Len with a screen on Mason. Elbow shot. The putback. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Oh, inspired by the move of Alex Len. How about the activity? The willingness to attack the rim on the putback. Mason against Knight. And then Randolph slams it in. And the one hand slam just looks so pretty when it's in his hand and he's the one doing the slam. Agreed. He is smooth as silk, even on a power finish. Knight kicks to Len. Over in the corner, Williams. Floats one. Yes, and Knight with the assist that time. Well, that shows a sign of maturity, guys. Everyone expecting Knight to try and score it. Instead, he finds the open man. Picked by Randolph. Mason dishes to Randolph over Williams. That doesn't go either for Randall. Just a little hesitation on that release, right? His timing looked a bit off. And it's slammed in by Williams. Well, not exactly one of those big, burly power forwards, right? He depends on his leaping ability more than those guys, and it serves him just fine, Kev. Tied against Mason. Doris, much of the chagrin of basketball purists, we're seeing the near extinction of the mid-range game. Is there a way to reverse this trend? Kevin, I don't know that we're seeing the extinction of it, and I would point directly to the finals MVP, Kevin Durant, because if you look at some of his success, it is directly in the mid-range. Russell Westbrook has some effect in the mid-range. 
I mean, listen, certainly the priority is on layup and three, but I don't think we've seen the extinction of the mid-range. I think this is a cyclical type of situation in the NBA, very much the way we've gone away from a low post center. Would a player that's a next level, next generation kind of player change our thinking about that? Let's see. The game is always in a constant state of evolution. Sacramento's gone two for two from three-point land to start the fourth quarter. Len grabs the board. Len's got double-digit rebounds now in the game. Here's Daniels and Jackson with the block. Here's Caboclo. He's covered by Daniels. Two shots. The first free throw is good. Impeccable from the line since halftime. Euless is checked in for Troy Daniels. And he makes both free throws. Boris coach Popovich on San Antonio once said that a female NBA coach is going to happen. How much longer do you think it'll take for that to happen? Well, I'm so grateful to Greg Popovich for getting the process that has to be part of the equation started, right? He hires Becky Hammond as the first full-time assistant in the NBA. Just like I would like to see doors open on the general manager side and let somebody start in the personnel aspect. Doors have to open before we can walk through them. It will take some time because you've got to pay your dues now as an assistant coach, but at least the process has started, and I'm so grateful to the Spurs and Pop for getting it started. And to be quite honest, as a, as a broadcaster, you're a pioneer from that end of it. We know that there's a lot of quality thought, male or female. You've represented uh, females, women, very well with what you do. I've been very lucky, Kevin, and thankful for the opportunity, certainly. The first one falls. And one of the problems in the first half, that shoddy work at the free throw line. They needed to fix that, and they've been much improved since the break. Garrett Temple has checked in for Sacramento. And both free throws good for Williams. Sacramento's gone two or three in the fourth quarter from long range. Good shooting so far. Jackson a screen on Dudley. To the inside, Williams with the steal. And Phoenix pushing it up now. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Doris, the revenue generating streams for players these days, more endorsements, acting opportunities, event appearances, you name it. What impact do you think that has had on the evolution of guys wanting to play in big markets, big cities? You know, I think the world is smaller, and so it's not necessarily a requirement to be in a large market in order to have some marketing success. You know, you look at any number of stars, even Russell Westbrook in Oklahoma City, he's pitching any number of major company uh, because of the level of talent. So I think it's been a good thing. I think it really comes down to where are these players comfortable? It's much more about organization and opportunity to win than it is city. And they are making it look easy at the free throw line here in the second half. Zach Randolph's checked in for Giles. And so he hits both. Here's Temple.
down low, broke loose. And here is Mason, shot by Post. Takes a big height bounce and goes in. Mason's got five points now in the quarter. The Sun shooting uh, about 47% here in the fourth. Williams has a screen for Ulis. Williams in the post. He's covered by Randolph. Williams, that's good. Dominating this quarter. He's been absolutely fantastic shooting the ball, and they still trail. Temple the pass to Randolph. Crawley Stein kicks to Jackson. Beyond the arc. Rebound by Williams. Well, Phoenix shooting struggles apparent. 37% from the field. The shot by night, no good. Sacramento's gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them have fallen. That's good from Ulis on the assist by Williams. And even with the height disadvantage, he finds a way to convert. Boy, you got to appreciate how confident he was in that instance. He doesn't allow the taller defender to stop him. He's saying, I'll take you on right now. Here's Temple. To the middle. Here's Cauley Stein. And once again, off the mark by Sacramento. He feeds it to Randolph. King's moving the ball around. Mason dishes to Randolph. Holly Stein up top, guarded by Len. Six to shoot. And Holly Stein throws it down. And, and as we head to the final buzzer here, a crushing blowout. Big time dominance. And, and this will go in the record books as a gouty win for the Kings. Their shot blocking turned out to give them a big advantage in this game. Yeah, excellent defense around the rim there, Kevin. That They were disciplined and focused. And an important milestone for them tonight as they pick up win number 10. And with this win now, we're all square, one and one. Two more games yet to come in what's proving to be a very competitive season series. And you know, guys, what a nice performance it was for Scal Labissiere. Boy, I think he made his presence felt in the paint more than anywhere else. This guy's rebounding numbers were outstanding. He controlled the glass. And he knocks down the first one. Doris, the new designated player veteran exception, allows teams to pay their biggest stars much more money than any other team can offer around the league. How good is that for the league in terms of competitive balance? Well, you would never to me want to see a player like LeBron James or Kevin Durant underpaid relative to their value of the team and I think for a long time Kevin that was part of this and so I'm interested in your take I want these guys to be fairly compensated um, and and that's the most important thing I do love when a player is developed by a team and stays with that team we see so few of those instances in pro sports but a lifelong pacer or a lifelong Celtic, I think to me that has great meaning, especially if I were a fan of that team. Well, we were so used to that as kids growing up. You know, those players stuck with our team for extended periods and many times for their entire career. Yes. Now here's Williams. Out of bounds, it'll go to the Suns. Forty seconds left in the fourth quarter. Kicks to Bender. And good. Got the friendly bounce off the right side of the rim. And guys, you got to ask, where was this effort when it mattered? The game's over now. Right. Frustrating for sure, Greg. I don't think they'll be able to mount a comeback at this point. Here's Temple. Outside Carter. Rebounded by Dudley. Inside, Knight. Sacramento grabs the miss. Yeah, good interior D there prevents the deuce. Well, if he wasn't there, that shot's going in. Love the effort on the defensive end. So it's the Kings winning this one easily. It was a tale of two teams tonight, one that was in total control, operating flawlessly, and 
together just searching for answers that they could never find. I mean, the energy here is just so tremendous. Fans involved from the get-go. And once they started to really pour it on, it was fun to see that rhythm and flow from their perspective. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thank you, Kevin, with Zach Randolph. Tebow, what was the biggest difference tonight? We just came out, we was more physical this game. We came out with uh, being aggressive. And that's what we had to do. We got stops, we've been aggressive, man. You know, everybody contributed tonight. It was a team win. Well, physical is who you guys are, Zach. Thanks. Kevin, back to you. All right, David, thank you. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.